We are going on an adventure. Are you ready? Oh, I have to thank you so much. You were so wonderful tonight. The dinner was so good, but you look like you have something on your mind. You know what? I, I do have something on my mind. Happy birthday, Paul McCartney. Yeah, so Paul, I was thinking about you yesterday, and all my troubles went away. Happy birthday, Paul. What's your favorite Beatles song? Um, I can't get no satisfaction. That's not a Beatles song. What do you mean? <laughs> Paul McCartney Paul didn't write that. No, he, that's a Mick Jagger song. Oh, really? Happy, Happy birthday! birthday! Paul McCartney! <laughs> oh, I love this table. I love the grain of it. It's so pretty. Could you tell me, is this is this good Norwegian wood? No. You got something on your mind? I sure do. Happy birthday, Paul. Oh, hell, where did you find that tray? I love it. What does that say? It says, if you buy this tray for $20, you're a sucker. <laughs> I think this is good Norwegian wood. No. Beautiful. <laughs> Boy, she is but beautiful. <laughs> Don't you think so? She, she's but beautiful. <laughs> Who would name an album but beautiful? Do you have any ties to Norway? Yes, my grandparents. I don't believe you. Your family's from Texas. Say one thing in Norwegian. Yeah, Yetus cheese. That's not, that's not Norwegian. This is my cousin. Of Ill course, way. I spelled Harold a little different, but from Norway. It's from Norway. And he did this great album. Wow. And the What's first, the big song on that album? Uh, Norwegian Wood. Are you serious? I'm serious. Oh my goodness, made in Norway? <laughs> I love these glasses. Oh my goodness. What does that glass remind you of? Money can't buy you love, but you can always try. <laughs> Done, lady. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a great week. I had a wonderful week. I know it sounds corny, but I celebrated Paul McCartney's 82nd birthday, and I had so much fun. My friend Hal that you all seem to like so much. He came up for a few days and we went everywhere and I took you with me. We went to the furniture store. We went to so many thrift stores, I lost count. We went to my son's restaurant. We went hiking in the woods anyway. So I brought you along with me. So this video is gonna go everywhere. And you know, in honor of Paul McCartney, I remembered when I was a kid and I would have my Beatles scrapbooks. And the one that I loved the most was the scrapbook I kept on all the Beatles' girlfriends and wives. And I would look at those beautiful ladies, and you know, I was like 10, and I would look at them and think, oh, to be pretty like that and to be able to wear makeup like that. So what I did is I did a get ready with me using a picture of Jane Asher and I tried to duplicate her makeup that she wore in 1966. So I hope you enjoy that and and even if even if you don't really approve of the final look please know it was done with so much love and so much joy. I can't tell you how happy that made me feel when I looked in the mirror and my hair was the exact hairdo that I wore in seventh grade. <laughs> and for some reason, like I was thinking, I didn't even know my hair could do that. <laughs>
still. And stick around till the end of the video. I found a vase at the thrift store and I knew it was pretty, but I didn't know that it was Fenton. And so I can't wait to show you this vase. It's worth hundreds of dollars and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. So are you ready? Whew. Okay, for real, what's your favorite Beatles song? I smoke on the water. I'm gonna buy you a shirt. Where's your size? Look at it, it's chaps. Now what if I buy you this shirt? Are you gonna wear it? I miss the way I really need you. Oh my God! <laughs> what happened? You found Jane Asher's hat? You found Jane Asher's hat? Yes. Oh my God. Never tried this before, but what the heck. Today I am going to try my hardest at almost 70 years old to look like Jane Asher. <laughs> 1965, little black cap and all. So are you with me? Okay, here we go. Now her makeup is very 2024, actually. She didn't go in for anything wild. She did a very natural look. You know, she had a very natural lip. I rarely ever saw her in a dark lip. She had hooded eyes even at 19 years old. She had, well, she had no eyelids. So what she did, I don't know why she did this, but she took like a coal eyeliner for the top of her, of her eyelid and then went over it with a liquid liner but I'm not sure why she did that. And then for her waterline, she used a black liner. God, what a difference maker. cover up this darkness in the corner of my eye, I'm always really, really happy. When I think about it, Jane was 19 years old when she was dating Paul. The most eligible bachelor in the whole world. Girls chasing him down the street. But he was hers. Yeah, that must have been quite a feeling. Jane didn't have a long nose, but she did have a wide nose. So... I don't think Jane ever had her nose done, but she did have uh, something done with her lids because now her lids look, you know, great. <laughs> and she's 70, I think Jane is 77 years old, so. Jane had a really round face, so let's kind of draw a round face here. I could just leave it like this, couldn't I? Put a little lipstick on and mascara and call it good. The way that Jane Asher did her eyes or had her eyes done made her hooded lids look worse. So I have terribly hooded lids, so for me to duplicate her look, I'm gonna have to make my eyes look pretty. She did one color here, and then this was amazingly light. And then she just went full tilt boogie with the eyeliner. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna leave it no matter what, you know, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go on with my evening tonight with my Jane Asher look, so it should be interesting. This is ColourPop Wild Nothing. This is such a great 1960s hippie palette. <laughs> liquid eyeliner but I'm gonna use it today now the funny thing is when Jane used liquid eyeliner she never gave herself a wing so I'm not exactly sure why she was using it but maybe that was just the thing in London 1965 1966 I don't know I'm telling you liquid eyeliner is an art isn't it it took me years and years and years to learn how to get my eyeliner never to transfer and that's just to go ahead and powder your lids. 
That's all you have to do and your eyeliner will stay all night long and it will never transfer. a place to be far living is a life for me oh wow look at this Milton Burl's private joke file oh my gosh do you think there's anything funny in here is your husband hard to please I don't know I never tried that's not funny oh wow that is amazing somebody put together that beautiful painting from a puzzle who would do that? I would. You would? I've done it before. Really? Yeah, you get a, you get a picture you like and... You put the puzzle together? You put the puzzle... Well, I usually hire somebody to put it together. Oh, you hire somebody. Well, what's the point of that? You don't get the satisfaction of putting it together yourself? Yeah, but I get the satisfaction that it's all done. Isn't this pretty? This vase is so pretty, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It's not really my style. You know, the vases that I have in my home are mostly pottery. They're, they're not glass. This is a, a very feminine vase. But when I saw it, and the colors matched my bedroom, and I thought, well, I have to have it. And it was just a few dollars in perfect condition, and I thought, okay. And there wasn't a sticker on the bottom. Well, when I went and did a Google search of the image, I couldn't believe it. It is indeed Fenton glass, and it's Charleston, and hand-painted and just beautiful. I found one for $320, and then I found another one. They were selling on Etsy, and it sold for only $187, but that's a whole lot more than what I paid for it. I don't Was it $6 I think I paid? But... I just love it, and I don't know, it was quite a find. I asked you this week what your favorite Beatles song was and why, and overwhelmingly, you named the song In My Life. And that's a song that Paul and John wrote right around, I believe, uh, 1966, Rubber Soul. And I remember that album came out right after my grandfather had died. And those words meant so much to me. There are places I remember, some have gone and some remain. But I know I'll always have affection for people and things that went before, I know I'll always stop and think about them because in my life, I've loved them all. And what, so when you named that song as your favorite, it really touched my heart. And you have to realize, Paul and John were in their 20s when they wrote that song. What would a 28-year-old man know about looking back on your life and, and feeling so sad about friends and places that no longer exist? And then Paul Simon, right around the same time, he's writing, he's writing an album called Bookends where he talks about time it was, what a time it was. I have a photograph, preserve your memories. They're all that's left you. He was in his 20s. What did he know about that? <laughs> Joni Mitchell. I've looked at life from both sides now, from up and down, from near and far. Love's illusion, I recall. I really don't know life at all. How, how would she write that in her 20s? So it got me thinking 
about when somebody says, don't look back, don't ever look back. Well, we're used to that. We're used to projecting the future and we're used to projecting the past. And we put it all together and it makes our life a story, a story worth telling. When, when my friend Hal came up, we were having dinner and we were reminiscing. Yeah, I mean, we've known each other since I was 22. And we were reminiscing about all the places we went, the people we knew, the people that we loved. My Bill, his Mary. It was, it was like living that song in my life. But never be discouraged. There is always a future. And there's never a reason to be afraid of our past. There always will be places I remember, though some have gone and some remain. I'm a long way from home. All the old streets are gone. All the old friends are gone. But I'll always find my way back to you. I remember uh, this porch. It was late at night in the summer. It was the first time I heard a Hard Day's Night by the Beatles. <laughs> and I love her. I remember that song. I remember there was a swing at the end of the porch and I just loved it. I walk every day. Do you think that helps? Yes, I think that helps. Like if I didn't walk, uh, of course, who am I to say I just had bypass surgery, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think walking helps. Yeah. Oh, wow, Hal, you're so brave. That's something that I never do when I'm here at the stream. I never venture into the stream. Hal, how old are you going to be on your next birthday? Well, ma'am, I'm going to be 77. <gasps> oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I had no idea. When somebody says living alone is lonely, what do you say? I say it's what you want it to be. If you want to be lonely, it's not hard to sit in that house and sit in a chair and watch TV. Are you Mr. Clean? I am. <laughs> Tidy. Mr. Tidy. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I just had such a wonderful week and thank you so much for coming with me and Hal. I hope you have a, a wonderful week. If you get time down below, could you share maybe what's your favorite Beatles song and why? Please have yourself a wonderful brand new summer week. And when you're done with your week, yep, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here. Yeah. She's got a ticket to ride, but she don't care. Does anybody live here? Huh? Does anybody live here? They're probably calling the police right now. I love this shirt. You would look so handsome in this. Can I buy this shirt for you? Um, no. If you did, it would be out in the garage with the other garage sale stuff. Oh, come on. It looks so nice. Look at it. It's in perfect condition. You look so handsome in it. Here, look at this. Let me buy you this. See? Happy birthday! Mama